everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be filming my rapid reviews for March. Um, be very rapid because I only finished three books in March, which apparently this is my reading speed for 2021. I seem to be managing to finish between three or four books a month. That seems to be what I'm doing for the minute. Um, so I'm just going to carry on, go with the flow and not get stressed out about the fact that I'm not reading particularly high numbers. I'm enjoying what I'm reading, which is good. I'm definitely taking more time over it. Um, but yeah, so let's just get cracking with the three books that I finished in the month of March. And we can pick my next tack on my TBR prompt for the month of April. Because as I said in a previous video, I'm not doing full TBRs. My brain's too stat scatty at the minute. I just want to pick up whatever I fancy. Um, no barriers to reading. I don't want to have anything on a TBR that I don't fancy reading because it's just making me avoid it. So without any further ado, let's just get straight on into the video. So the first book that I finished in the month of March was a non-fiction book. This was Hard Pushed by Leah Hazard. I'll pop up a copy of the cover here. So this is a non-fiction book um, told from the perspective of a midwife. So it's very much in the vein of This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. Um, that was a book I read either last year or the year before, I can't remember. Um, basically detailing her experiences, sort of training and on the job as a midwife, the challenges that she faced, um, sort of difficult situations, the different kind of patients that she kind of encountered different methods of and obviously with her being a midwife it was focused on the different methods of birth and kind of things that could happen during labor things like that and you know it was a really really interesting read I, I very much enjoyed it it was narrated by Leah Hazard herself and she was very pleasant to listen to I listened to this in an audiobook and she was very very pleasant to listen to um and like I said it was it was very good um I think I rated this one a four star I thought it was it was a really, really strong read. Um, as opposed to um, the other one I mentioned, This Is Gonna Hurt, this one definitely had less of a comedic kind of view on it. It was a bit more serious, but very much a, a pleasant read that I would highly recommend if you're interested in that kind of topic. Um, but yeah, great, uh, great read there. I very much enjoyed. The second book that I finished in March was one that I'd been working away on since my birthday uh, in February because it's, I got this one for my birthday. So this was A Curse So Dark and Lonely um, by Bridget Kemmerer. I obviously read this one as a physical copy. Um, I really enjoyed this book. This was another four star read for me. Um, it's obviously, I think most people know about this book. It follows Harper and she's sort of taken away into a different sort of realm, universe, dimension kind of thing, um, and meets the Prince Wren, who has got a bit of an issue. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so you can probably guess what issue Wren has to deal with. You follow Harper and Wren through this book as they are trying to deal with the events that are affecting Emberfall, and Harper has got her own issues. She has got a, a very unwell mother, a brother that she's worried about because he's trying to get out of financial issues caused by her father, and Harper herself has cerebral palsy, so she's got her own um, kind of issues to deal with. Um, she's a great character. I really enjoyed Harper. She was very strong and independent and didn't like to be treated any differently because of her disability. Um, I really enjoyed reading from her perspective. I thought she was great. Like, she was, like I say, very strong, very independent, but also sometimes we just be like, I have no idea what to do. She would just admit that she had no idea what to do. She didn't have the answers to everything. She would admit when she was wrong. Um, I really enjoyed her. I thought she was great. And the other character of Ren, I thought he was decent enough. Um, not the most standout as a, a, you know, Prince love interest type of thing, but no, no issues here with him. I really enjoyed the character of Grey, and I believe he is the one who maybe is more centre stage in the second book in this uh, trilogy, uh, Hearts So Fierce and Broken, which I hope to get to very soon. But yep, yeah, this was a four star read for me. I really, really enjoyed it. And would highly recommend if you haven't yet picked one up. And the last book that I read in March, I'll now put another picture up here of it. This was The Coven by Lizzie Fry. Now I got a copy of this um, through NetGalley um, in exchange for an honest review. And I must admit, I had really high expectations for The Coven. This follows a group of witches um, <clears throat> in sort of a, it's like a, I feel like it's like a dystopian kind of alternative universe. 
um, where witchcraft is considered illegal, being a witch is a crime, witches are being hunted down, they're being killed, they're being locked up, they're being put into camps. Um, it's very much a case of witches against the non-witch women called the goodies and the and, and men who can't be witches. And it's like a new Puritan movement kind of coming from the sort of Salem witch trials type of thing. So the people in power are putting all this anti-witch propaganda out there. And um, basically there is a young woman who has just discovered she's a witch, a very powerful witch at that. And she is coming into terms with having her powers and being guided by um, other witches um, to fulfill um, kind of a greater destiny um, in line for her. This book, I don't know whether I just had a different idea of what I was expecting from this book, from what I got. Obviously it started off being kind of very sort of, you know, it was showing, um, it was kind of, it was kind of using witchcraft as um, showing a kind of a misogyny, I guess. Um, women weren't trusted, you had husbands weren't murdering their wives, you had families torn apart. Um, it was obviously very difficult reading from that perspective and you could apply it to other things that were obviously not witchcraft related. Um, it was very cool in the fact that it had kind of um, mixed media type thing. It had sort of what like posters and speeches against sort of women and, and witchcraft. It had kind of sort of online kind of articles that came up on all these kinds of things. Um, and it really kind of got you into the feel of the time of, you know, like it put you in mind of like sort of war sort of propaganda and it's all this anti, anti witch propaganda. Um, there's three types of witches. There's your kitchen witches who just do little sort of potions and tinctures and potter around with things. Um, but they're not considered a, a threat, but they were wanted, they wanted them to kind of hand in their spell books and their, their cauldrons and things like that. You had crystal witches, which were considered a lot more dangerous than kitchen witches. But they said, oh, we, we can we can cure them. They could go to these camps called the Angel Caves and cure the, the, the witch, witches, um, if they were crystal witches. And then you had elementals when they just had kill orders out on them. They were the most powerful and the most rare and considered the highest threat. Like I said, this was all very, very interesting. I enjoy the kind of differences between the types of witches and kind of what that kind of meant for their families and their children when like all this action was happening. So the first kind of part of the book was very much setting that scene and I really enjoyed that. Um, and then there was kind of, there was kind of a twist as to who the villain of the piece was, if that makes sense. It's one of those things, if you read it, you understand. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but um, the, the government organization that's hunting down the witches are called the Sentinel. Um, and basically there's all these essentially women hating men running down witches and they're not fantastic people. Um, one of the characters is actually um, a member of the Sentinel that's decided actually what they're doing is wrong. So it was good to have his perspective. Um, but yeah, there was a twist that I wasn't really expecting and I really don't think I liked it that much. It took me a while to rate this book because I was trying to decide what my issue was with it. Now, I didn't really like the twist. I felt like the twist of who was the overall villain kind of took away from what the rest of the book was doing. So I didn't really understand why the author went down that road. But then maybe I had a different expectation of what this book was in my head. I don't know. I wasn't really that keen on the twist. Um, the plot was decent enough. Um, the resolution I thought was a bit generic. I wasn't really that keen on the resolution. I kind of just felt like, did she just not know what to do with it? I don't know. It kind of seemed, seemed to get to this point and then there was the, the way it ended and I was like, oh, okay, that was probably the least interesting and the least uh, unique part of the book was the ending. So not a huge fan of the ending. And um, the characters I felt really let this down. So you had the main characters you were following of, not of the, the sort of Sentinel, but the main characters you were following were Chloe, which was the young witch who was coming into her powers, um, Adelita, who was a crystal witch who was sort of guiding her, um, Ethan, who was a rogue Sentinel officer, and Daniel, who was Chloe's father, completely non-witch man, just trying to help out his daughter. So yeah, the characters were definitely lacking. I didn't connect to any of them. I didn't find any of them particularly interesting. Um, Chloe, to me, was just a complete brat until she seemed to get a bit more mature near the end. There was definitely development there, but I didn't find her likeable at all. 
she was going through a lot, understandable for some of her reactions, but no, can't say I was really enjoying her. Adelita, I just felt like she was completely generic and there was nothing about her that really stood out. Um, Daniel, I probably liked the most. You could see, I, I found his insight very interesting. He was coming from the situation of his, he didn't know that his, his daughter was a witch and he was trying to help her. And it was kind of going against what he'd researched and what he thought. And his ponderings were definitely probably the more interesting of the character insights that I found. And he was probably the most likable character of all of them. Ethan, uh, the rogue sentinel author, I, see, I say rogue sentinel, the, the term rogue sentinel was used a ridiculous number of times. If you were to read this book and use that as a drinking game, take a shot every time the author used the words rogue sentinel, you'd be wasted very quickly. I don't know why she felt the need to re to address him as the rogue sentinel all the time. We got it. He changed his allegiance. That's fine. But he was addressed as rogue sentinel so much. It, it, it got grating. It really did. It was far too many times that she needed to stop saying that phrase. Um why she didn't just use his name more often. I don't know, it didn't, it just irritated me. Um, <clears throat> overall, I ran this through call pile and it came out with a three star rating. I think that's fair. I think the concept was really, really good. It was very interesting, it was very unique, but I just don't think the execution was for me and the characters I felt let it down. Definitely thinking that characters are more important to me than I realized in books that I'm reading recently. I don't know, I always thought I was a plot driven reader and I don't know whether I'm changing or whether I'm just character driven and I didn't really know. But <clears throat> anyway, this book came out as a three star. I did enjoy it, but it wasn't what I expected. And I kind of, I feel like what I expected would have been a better story, but that's just my opinion. Um, I'm really appreciative that I got a copy of this one to review from NetGalley, as I said earlier. Um, and if it sounds like something that would be interesting to you, then please do go ahead and read it. There are a lot of positive reviews on Goodreads. I seem to be maybe in the, minor my in the minority a little bit um, with this one, but that was just my thoughts. So that is my wrap up of the three books that I read this month. Overall, I really enjoyed my reading this month. There are a couple of books that I haven't yet finished. I'm in the middle of reading Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. Um, and I also have now finished The Silver Witch by Paula Braxton, which was my Attack of the TBR book for March, but I technically finished it in the first couple of days of April. So I'm gonna be including that one in my April wrap up um, because that's technically when I finished it. So that one will be next wrap up. Um, perhaps a glaring omission is Wicked King by Holly Black. That was my Tackle the TBR book for February and I'm still not finished it. It's just not pulling me in at the minute, but I'm pushing on through and I hope to finish it in the next few days. But again, that one I'm determined will feature in next month's wrap up. So let's move swiftly on to picking <clears throat> the next Tack on My TBR book from my jar. So here we go. So this book is <clears throat> read a book that you have borrowed that you really ought to return. Now I have quite a few of those. <laughs> Um, but when I was thinking of this prompt in my mind, the one that kind of sparked that was Unquiet Minds. And I can't for the life of me remember the author. It's a non-fiction book. I will pop a photo up here if I can find one. It's an old book. Um, but I borrowed this from a friend of mine who found the topics too distasteful, shall we say. Um, and I was a bit fascinated, um, things like necrophilia, that kind of thing. Um, and she didn't like the sound of it and her describing how much she disliked this book made me want to read it. So I borrowed it from her at sort of, I must have been about April time in 2020 and I haven't got around to reading it yet because I'm that person. So I'm going to use that one for my Tackle the TBR book this month and try and get that book back to her at some point this year. So 
that is everything for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please do check out some of my other videos if you would like to see some more. I'm hoping to have a few more videos up very soon. I've got a book on haul that I want to go and film quite possibly now. And um, you can find me on Instagram at Beast Books and Beauty, also on Twitter at Beast Book Beauty. Um, and also my wee pup Kanan has his own Instagram as well. If you'd like to have a look at his adventures, they are on the Chronicles of Kanan on Instagram. They are all linked down below. But like I say, I will cut the video short here as it's meant to be a speedy one, not me blathering on 10 to the dozen. So I will catch you for another video very soon. Bye.